Assalamu alaikum. My brothers and sisters, everyone wants to know how much money someone else has or others have. People get so interested to know how others are making their money, why do they have so much and so on. If they do have, mostly people think others have more money than they actually have. But anyway, what is of greater interest is people want the money for themselves. Now, what is all this about money? Allah Almighty says that certain things have been beautified for man as a test. So money is one of them, wealth, where no matter how much humankind has, humankind would always want to have more. But do you know what we're taught? There is no point in having wealth that comes without blessing. Wealth that is a punishment from the Almighty. There is no point of having so much when it comes with you having lost your connection with the Almighty or no happiness, no contentment, no good health. We need enough so that we can survive, perhaps lead a relatively comfortable life, reach out to others using the same wealth and at the same time receive the blessings of the Almighty. We want goodness, happiness, contentment, whatever else, lovely families. We would like a beautiful, cozy home where as we think of going back home, already the heart is calmed. Not a home where you think about it and you don't even want to go anywhere near or as soon as you get in, you're totally distressed. That's not a home. That is perhaps a punishment from Allah. Perhaps it is the snatching away of blessings to say the least. We need to do something about it to earn the blessings. So how would we be able to earn wealth and sustenance and at the same time ensure that it's coming with the blessings of the Almighty. Well, here goes. Point number one, your five daily prayers. No matter what, if you have fulfilled those five daily prayers on a daily basis, rest assured the wealth you're going to get would be filled with blessings and goodness on condition that you've also taken care of a few other things. But that is one of the starting points. Without that, there is no chance you're going to be having blessings in your wealth. And in fact, Allah Almighty speaks about this beautiful, beautiful uh, verse in Surah, uh, Surah Taha, right at the end. Allah says, وَأْمُرْ أَهْلَكَ بِالصَّلَاةِ وَاسْطَبِرْ عَلَيْهَا Instruct your family or your, your relatives, you know, your family members, instruct your family members to fulfill and establish prayer and bear patience upon it. Upon what? Upon the fulfillment of the prayer and the continuous reminder to your family members in a beautiful way to pray. When your father, your mother, your brothers, your sisters, even your children were to remind you about prayer, don't feel upset. It's from Allah Almighty. They will tell you, please pray or get up. It's time for Fajr and so on. You know, come on, do your prayers. It is late and so on. Those are the blessed words that were sent to your ears by Allah Almighty. They are registered by the angels and your reaction will also be registered. Be careful. Let's try and react correctly. It's like when the caller calls to, for, to prayer. He says, Hayya ala salah, hayya ala al -falah. Allah has instructed him through the blessed lips of Muhammad, peace be upon him, to call out to people to say, come to prayer, come to success. Those two come hand in hand. Come to prayer, come to success. It's repeated how many times a day? For, we have five prayers, right? Each for each prayer, it is repeated four times. So four times you hear come to prayer and four times you hear come to success. Now, my brothers, my sisters, Multiply that by five. 20 times a day you're being told, come to prayer, come to success. You've heard it. If you've heard it, your reaction is also recorded. Subhanallah. Now, if you were to pray, look what Allah says. Wastabir alayha. Be patient upon the prayer. Persevere. Continue. Make sure it's not easy to get up in the morning to make. There will come a time once you do it for a while that you're just awake at the time. You feel like praying. Go and cry to the Almighty. Wash yourself and fall prostrate for Allah Almighty. When you're reminded to pray, don't be lazy, don't be, don't be upset because that is true success. Here, Surah Taha, Allah Almighty says, La nas aluka rizqa. We are not asking you to sustain us or for sustenance. We're not asking you sustenance. Nahnu narzukuk. We will actually sustain you. We will provide for you. Nahnu narzukuka. We will give you sustenance. What do you want? You want wealth, you want so much more, you want your contentment, your happiness, whatever else. We will give it to you as a result of what? as a result of you bearing patience upon prayer and instructing your family to pray. So when you tell each other to pray, by virtue of that beautiful instruction, you will already be achieving blessings in sustenance. That is amazing. That is amazing. And if you don't remind each other to pray and you're living in the same house, don't expect further blessings from Allah Almighty. Subhanallah. Even though he does give us, sometimes it's not a blessing. People get wealth as a source of their ultimate downfall. That has happened to so many in the past. The Quran's given examples of that. So we need to be careful, my brothers, my sisters. 
That is point number one, prayer, five times a day. The second thing you need if you would like to achieve lots in terms of sustenance and blessings and, and, and lots of contentment and goodness and happiness and even multiplication in wealth, you must ensure that you seek the forgiveness of Allah on a daily basis. In Surah Nuh, he tells his people, the Prophet Noah, may peace be upon him, Istaghfiru rabbakum innahu kana ghaffara. Seek the forgiveness of your Lord. Indeed, he is most forgiving, oft forgiving. Yursilis sama'a alaykum midrara. He will send beneficial rain from the heavens, meaning from the skies, uh, upon you, beneficial rain. Wayumdidkum bi amwalin wa banin. He will grant you, subhanallah, lots of wealth as a result of what? Seeking forgiveness. You know, getting onto the same page as he who made you. So seeking forgiveness, he will grant you lots of wealth and lots of children, offspring, blessings. Blessings in your family, blessings in your wealth. By doing what? By seeking the forgiveness of the Almighty. So you have your prayer and you have the instruction of the prayer to one another. And then you have seeking the forgiveness of Allah Almighty and ensuring that you mend your ways and habits. What's the point of seeking forgiveness when you haven't really regretted the thing you've done or you haven't prayed or you're not interested in doing the right thing. But if you seek forgiveness correctly, often on a daily basis for the sins you know you committed, for those you don't know you committed, for those you don't even realize you committed sometimes, those are minor sins. But the major ones as well, we ask Allah's forgiveness individually from the sins and collectively as well. May Allah Almighty grant us goodness and forgiveness. And the last point I want to make mention of, if you would like barakah and blessings, my brothers and sisters, ensure that, ensure that your character and conduct is amazing. Don't hurt a soul. Do not slander someone. Do not accuse them. Do not abuse them. Do not backbite about them. Do not uh, hurt them in a way that subhanallah, it comes back to you with evil because that's called hukukul ibad, the rights of fellow humans. And Allah is very quick Allah is very quick to retaliate against someone who has hurt people who are close to him. Subhanallah. So you'd rather stay away. Make sure you treat people with respect. Make sure you utter good words. Make sure you stay away from backbiting. Backbiting is to say bad things behind your brother or sister that are true. That if they heard them, they would feel offended. Subhanallah. Have you ever realized that? If it was not true, it's called buhtan. It's a slander. That's even worse. These are major, major, major sins. Subhanallah. We ask Allah Almighty to grant us forgiveness. So you won't achieve any barakah or blessings if you were to abuse others, accuse others, slander them, backbite them, deceive them, cheat them, steal from them and whatever else. You need to improve that. So on one hand, your prayer has improved, your seeking forgiveness has improved and your relationship with others needs to improve. Notice how every time these three or a few of these pointers keep coming up because that's the essence of life. Worship Allah alone and remember to treat everyone else with utmost respect. Many people are suffering. Many people are struggling in their families, in their wealth, in their health, with their contentment. They don't realize the reason you're suffering is because you made someone else suffer. That's all. May Allah Almighty grant us forgiveness and make us really from among those who can develop ourselves and take heed. Beautiful reminder in these beautiful nights of Ramadan. Remember, we're almost about to start the last 10 and these will be the most powerful nights of the entire year for us as Muslims, make the most of them. Let's change our lives. Become steadfast. Promise Allah that you're going to pray five times a day. See how in the future, as time passes, one by one, the doors of sustenance will keep opening for you no matter what. And risk includes your spouse, your children, your family members. That's also part of risk. It's part of sustenance, not just your wealth and money. Wealth and money, don't worry about how much someone else has. Don't worry about where and how they earned. It's not going to change your life in any way. It's going to make your life more miserable maybe worry about what Allah has given you and why he has given that to you. If you are far from Allah, then you need to worry and be concerned about that distance. Perhaps it is uh, causing whatever negativity you have in your lives. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us closeness to him.